Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Several detained in joint police military operation in Spalding. Several persons were detained on Friday during a joint police military operation in Spalding, located at the border of Clarendon and Manchester. Head of Operations for Manchester Police Superintendent David Blake said the operation, which targeted wanted men and persons of interest, followed the migration of criminals from various parts of Clarendon. The operations will continue over the coming days. Blake added that the operations form part of police military activities under the state of emergency imposed in Clarendon. Superintendent Blake said the security forces are mindful of people's rights. Uh, Manchester, in fact, has, has operational and administrative responsibility uh, for spoiling and it's currently under a state of uh, public emergency. So we are conducting this operation in the community to ensure that we restore public order and those men who are wanted in the community are persons of interest. They are, are picked up by the police. Uh, so far we have detained several men. We have conducted several uh, targeted and, and intelligence driven operations and we intend to conduct these operations for the duration of the state of uh, public emergency and to ensure that those who are, who are detained are taken to the, the appropriate detention centre and, and due process is, is exercised. We are mindful that the, the residents have uh, their, their human rights, so we are not interfering in any way, shape or form with their human rights. But we have to ensure, as, as the security forces, that law and order is maintained. And we have had some, some concerns in the sporting community. So we, there, are, there are incidents of robberies, and breaking throughout the nights and we are getting the information from the public and we're encouraging the public to continue to share information with the police about men who are wanted any strange men who are in the community because that is one of the concerns that we're having st catherine authorities examining shelter readiness ahead of hurricane season the st catherine municipal corporation says it is examining the state of readiness of the shelters in the parish ahead of the June 1 start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Speaking at the recent meeting at the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation, Parish Disaster Coordinator Yashika Thompson said only minor issues have been identified so far and where concerns have been found, these were raised with the school administration and Ministry of Education. A full report on the shelters will be provided after the assessment is completed. This report will likely come at the next committee meeting in June, she stated. Dr. Peter Phillips signaled intent to leave representation of politics. Former leader of the opposition and member of parliament for East Central St. Andrew, Dr. Peter Phillips, has officially signaled his intent to leave representation of politics. Dr. Phillips handed over the stewardship of his constituency on Sunday night, passing the button to counselor of the Maxfield Division, Dennis Garden. Speaking at a candidate presentation ceremony at Norman Manley High School on Saturday night, Dr. Phillips said he was pleased with how smoothly the process has gone in the constituency. Mr. Garden was welcomed by current People's National Party PNP President Mark Golden, who noted that he is a people's choice. Tonight completes a process of selection. There is still an election that has to take place, which will in due course give the mandate of the people to Dennis Gordon. And I said the mandate of the people because elections are the real test. On this occasion tonight, due process having been duly followed, the constitution of the People's National Party having been applied meticulously, the delegates of East Central St. Andrew have duly chosen Comrade Dennis Gordon to be your candidate in the next general election for the People's National Party. Opposition continues criticism of massive salary increase for politicians. Opposition leader Mark Golden has again expressed his disapproval of the government's decision to grant massive salary increases to the political directorate. He said it is unintendable and impractical for Jamaica to be paying its politicians a higher salary than its counterpart in the region with better economic performance. It's unjustifiable for Jamaica to be paying its political class at levels which are way out of work of all region peers, countries like Bahamas, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and so on. Countries that enjoy a much higher income per capita 
than we do, countries that have achieved higher levels of growth than we have, how we are justifying giving such a huge increase overnight to the political class he questioned. While admitting that political leaders should be paid for their work, Mr. Golding said, the compensation should not be so far above the rest of the populace. You choose to fix salaries of the highest subcategory of the highest span in the public sector wage scale under the new restructuring, and the result has been a huge increase never seen before as far as I'm aware in the history of Jamaica for elected officials. The country is not accepting it. We must not go ahead with it in this form, revisit it, address it appropriately, consult widely, and come with a better, more pliable package that is proportionate to help our economy in performing and that the people will feel it's justified, said the opposition leader. He was speaking at a People's National Party meeting in St. Andrew East Central constituency on the weekend. PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell has rejected the rationale that the increase in salaries for the political directorate will attract the best candidates for the job. Since the announcement of the new salaries, both Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark have used the justification to defend the significant increases awarded. But Dr. Campbell argued that the rationale is flawed and there is no reason research to support the ideal. The people would already earn properly. They were coming into politics to serve. They never did a come for the money. So all he's going to do is to ensure that the liquor riff rough them way have come over upon him upon the bench, fight with stay in a parliament without the ability to make any contribution to the development of the country, he contended. Dr. Campbell insisted people who enter politics should not do so in anticipation of financial gain but based on what they have to offer. He was also speaking at the PNP meeting in the St. Andrew East Central constituency on the weekend. Prime Minister says performance-based remuneration system will hold politicians to account. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has sought to assure that members of the political directorate will be held to account when a performance-based remuneration system is implemented. Speaking at a function in St. Catherine, Mr. Holness acknowledged the public concern about the announced increase in salary for the political directorate and compliance of underperformance. He said the performance-based remuneration system will also apply to all who work in the public sector. Mr. Holness said having gotten an increased salary politicians are aware that they must prove to citizens that it is justified. There will accompany these salary increases, not just for MPs, not just for ministers, but there will be the implementation of an entire system of performance-based remuneration. So, yes, we are focused on improving the compensation element. The second phase now is performance-based remuneration systems. We are happy to hear the society call for accountability. We are happy to hear the society call for performance measurements. And yes, it will be implemented both for the executive and for the legislature, but it will also be a general trend for the public service. The idea is that we must now claim increased productivity, having addressed the long-standing issue of wage levels in the civil service. Unfortunately, by virtue of how it has unfolded, we were not able to put first and foremost the accountability measures. But we have established, and I will announce shortly, a series of accountability measures. And I've said to my MPs and I've said to the ministers that the price of this, the cost of this policy is accountability. Every single MP, all ministers are now committed to ensuring that they earn the salary. They understand that, that this is not an argument that where we were paid well from the beginning and therefore on that basis is justification. No. The argument within the MP caucus is that having got this increase, we must now prove to the Jamaican people, even harder than we were working before, that the increases are justified. And they understand that. They understand that the accountability issues are foremost in the minds of the people and that we must do tangible things. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.